Hi, and welcome back. A single VCA gives you voltage control over the volume of a sound or amount of modulation. But when you have a couple and a few basic tools, you can expand your options a lot. In this video, simple VCAs are used to create a banner, crossfader, voltage controlled polarizer, logic functions, and a voltage control trigger combiner and mixer. I can only make these videos because of the fantastic support I receive from my patrons. If you want to join the crew or get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. You can also support my channel through affiliate links in the video description. But now, let's dive right in. Panners are fun tools that can be used to create a stereo sound or divide a control voltage over multiple destinations. And they're easy to patch up. Let's start with a simple example, using an oscillator and filter synth voice controlled with a sequencer and envelope. You can easily create a panner by sending two copies of a single signal in this case, the audio from the filter, to two VCAs. If you use one for the left and one for the right output, you created a stereo signal. To create movement, modulate one VCA with something like an LFO directly and send a copy of that signal to an inverter before modulating the second VCA. Now, when one VCA opens, the other closes and the other way around. You can use the same panning trick to distribute an audio signal anywhere in the patch. For example, here you see a single oscillator panned to two different filters to create a more extreme stereo effect. The oscillator is sequenced and triggering two envelopes modulating the filters. You can also use a panner to divide a control voltage over multiple destinations. Here, a fast LFO is used as the input for the two VCAs. A slow LFO is modulating the VCAs, continuously sweeping the fast LFO from one destination to the other. In this setup, one output of the panner is modulating the shape of an oscillator and the other the frequency of the filter. The simple voice is sequenced and the filter is modulated with an envelope as well. I covered a lot more fun patch ideas for all the functions like panning in the videos you see here. So have a look at any of those if you'd like to learn more after this video. Crossfaders are basically reversed panners. They can be used to make a blend between two signals sent to a single destination. Here, an oscillator is sent to a VCA, and the sample player playing a looping radio noise-like sound is sent to another VCA. The output of the VCAs is sent to a mixer and then a filter. A sequencer is creating a tune for the oscillator and triggering an envelope modulating the filter. Similar to the panner, an LFO is used to modulate one VCA directly and the other VCA through an inverter. Now, the input to the filter crossfades between the oscillator and noise, creating an interesting dynamic sound. Remember, you can use the offset and CV attenuators on the VCA to dial in the exact balance you like. The ratio between the signals doesn't have to be equal. You can 
use the same trick with two oscillators or two different wave shapes from a single oscillator. Of course, you don't need to use an LFO to modulate a panner or crossfader. Here is the same basic patch with two VCAs mixing an oscillator and noise source to a filter. This time though, a keyboard is used and an attack hold release envelope is opening the filter. At the same time, the gate from the keyboard is sent to a second attack hold release envelope, this time with a slower attack stage. That signal is used to crossfade the audio signals. For example, to fade from tone to noise when you hold a key for a longer time. Because an envelope is a unipolar signal, remember to adjust the offset properly on the VCAs. One starts open and is closed with the inverted envelope, one starts closed and is opened with the regular envelope. Just like the panner, crossfaders are great for all sorts of interesting tricks with control voltages. Here you see a simple oscillator filter voice controlled with sequencer and envelope. Two VCAs with an LFO are set up to crossfade between two input signals used to modulate the filter. To create some interesting rhythmic movement, a copy of the sequencer's clock is used to advance a clock divider. And a divide by 3 and divide by 8 gate output are used to feed the crossfader setup. This creates interesting fluctuating synced patterns. Voltage-controlled polarizers are a great way to create dynamic modulation. They can be used to sweep control voltages between a regular and inverted signal. The voltage-controlled polarizer is very similar in setup to the crossfader. Two VCAs are used and the outputs of those are mixed. A single modulation source like an LFO is used to modulate one VCA directly and another through an inverter. In order to polarize something, for example an envelope, the input signal is sent directly to one of the VCAs and the copy is sent through an inverter and then the input of the second VCA. In this setup, the envelope is used to modulate the filter in a simple sequenced voice. In this setup, the LFO is effectively crossfading between the two inputs, the regular positive envelope and the inverted negative envelope. Or in other words, it's polarizing the envelope. <laughs> You can experiment with many variations to this. Here is effectively the same patch with a simple envelope being polarized. This time though, the result is modulating the wave shape. A second envelope is added to modulate the filter. Ring modulator does exactly the same as a polarizer, just with audio signals. So for example, if you use a sine wave oscillator and an inverted version of that signal as the input and use a second sine wave oscillator to modulate the VCAs, you get classic ring mod sounds. Here the carrier oscillator is sequenced and the signal from the second oscillator is visualized in blue because that is the modulator. Remember though, it runs at audio speeds and is very audible in the result as well. A filter and envelope are used to shape the sound.
Just a single VCA can function as a voltage controlled gate, or in other words, AND logic. And you can do more with a few extra tools. Just in case AND logic is unclear, here you see two gate patterns generated by a Clark divider. The second is four times as slow as the first. If you use the first signal as the input of a VCA, and the second signal to open the VCA, the first signal will only pass on to the output of the VCA if both signals are high. This is AND logic. The VCA only produces a high gate output if both the first and the second signal create a high gate output at the same time. Here you see that in a simple patch. A clock is driving a divider and two divisions are used as input and CV input of the VCA. The resulting pattern is used to trigger a hat. If you use fun uneven divisions to feed the VCA, you create more interesting hat patterns. A kick is triggered by a divide by a division. You can easily create end logic for more than two inputs by chaining VCAs. In this setup, the output of the first VCA will only pass on to the head if the second VCA has a high gate modulating the CV input. So this setup only produces a gate signal if the input of the first VCA and both modulation inputs are high. Simple logic is fun for all sorts of stuff, for example to start and stop sequencers. Here you see a simple voice with sequencer. A master clock is sent to a divider. An uneven division is used as the input for a VCA and a copy of the clock is used to modulate the CV input of that VCA. The result is used to forward the sequencer. In this setup, the clock only progresses the melody if the divider outputs a high gate. You can dive deeper into logic if you have an inverter and offset voltage. Here you see a gate pattern that is occasionally high. On the second line you see a copy of that signal. If you invert it, you get a negative signal that can't trigger anything. But when you add offset to this signal and bring it back into the positive range, you can see the result is high where the original signal was low and the other way around. Here you see the example used at the beginning of this chapter. If you apply the invert and add offset trick to the output of the VCA, you create a NAND output, or not AND. Or in other words, a signal that is high whenever either of the input signals is not high. You can experiment with variations. When you combine a few VCAs with a mixer, you can create a voltage controlled mixer. This is fun for audio of course, but also for something like a voltage control trigger combiner. Voltage control trigger combiners are fun and easy. Here you see two VCAs. One is send a steady clock and the other a divide by three division. The outputs of the VCAs are mixed and used to trigger a head sample. Now you can use things like unsynced LFOs or smooth random voltages to modulate the two VCAs. By setting the modulation depth and input signal strength, you can control how much of the input signal of each VCA is passed on to the mix, and thus triggering the sample. The same concept can be used to create a voltage controlled mixer. You can take as many VCAs as you like and feed them things like complete synth voices or complex drum mixes. Just mix the outputs of the VCAs and you have voltage control over the volume of each element in the mix. 
You can use something like a random voltage or the crossfader trick with one regular and one inverted LFO. This is great for complex self-playing patches or generative drones. So whenever you see these functions, you know you don't need dedicated modules to use them. If you'd like to learn more, have a look here. And as always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more Marder content from me. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.